Adanaya, what happened? How did you get these bruises? Adanaya hesitated but finally lied. I fell down and got injured. Anna, not convinced, asked directly. Did Onyedika do this to you? Adanaya couldn't hold back her tears, confirming Anna's suspicions. Just then, Onyedika appeared and sternly told Anna to leave their home and never return. Anna, surprised and worried, attempted to ask Onyedika, but Adanaya, fearing further consequences, stopped her and pleaded. Anna, please go. I will be fine. Adan Naya, a charming young lady from Uri Kingdom in Igbo land, was the epitome of beauty that captured the heart of every man in her village. Despite the admiration, she remained humble and industrious, assisting her mother in working on people's farms. Raised by her mother since her father's passing, Adan Naya embodied the virtues of a well-mannered child. Her days were filled with hard work and dedication to support her family. Yet, her grace and beauty were the talk of the entire village. In this small community, Adan Naya found a loyal friend in honor, a stunning girl from a wealthy family. Despite their differences in social standing, Anna often joined Adan Naya in helping her mother. Their friendships blossomed and they became inseparable. Anna, recognizing the genuine nature of Adan Naya's character, admired her friend's resilience and integrity. The two friends shared laughter, dreams, and the joys of their everyday lives. Anna's occasional assistance to Adan Naya's family reflected the strength of their friendship proving that true companionship knows no economic divide. As time passed, the friendship between Adanaya and Ona became a source of inspiration for the entire village. The beauty of their connection surpassed the superficial allure of Adanaya's looks, leaving a lasting impression on the hearts of those who witnessed their unwavering bond. In the vibrant landscape of Igbo land, Adanaya and Ona stood as a testament to the power of friendship, transcending societal expectations and showcasing the beauty that emerges when hearts connect, irrespective of background or status. As Adanaya and Honor grew into beautiful young ladies, the village buzzed with eager suitors seeking Adanaya's hand in marriage. Many men approached her, but she declined their proposals. However, one man named Onyedika a wealthy farmer from their village caught her heart. Onyedika, in his late thirties and yet to marry, approached Adanaya with a proposal. Excitement filled the air as Adanaya, after a moment of reflection, accepted his proposal with a resounding yes. The village celebrated their union, unaware of the secret Onyedika harbored. Ona, Adanaya's close friend, observed Onyedika's treatment of other women. She noticed his mistreatment and bad behavior towards them. Consigned for Adana, Anna grappled with the dilemma of whether to share her observations. She feared that Adanaya might misconstrue her intentions, thinking Anna was merely jealous and trying to prevent her from getting married. With a heavy heart, Anna chose to keep her consigned to herself, silently praying for the success of Adanaya's marriage. Weeks later, the joyous occasion arrived as Adanaya and Onyedika exchanged vows and embarked on their journey as a married couple, moving into their new matrimonial home. The village continued to revel in the happiness of the newlyweds. Unaware of the shadows that locked behind Onyedika's seemingly charming facade, as Adanaya started her new life with Onyedika, Ona hoped that her friend's marriage would unfold positively, despite the lingering unease she felt about Onyedika's true nature. In the first month of Adan Naya and Onyedika's marriage, everything seemed smooth and sweet. However, trouble brewed after Adan Naya served Onyedika a meal one day. He suddenly became aggressive, 
pouring the food on her and yelling about not eating leftovers or the same meal twice a week. He ordered her to make pounded yam and masala soup immediately. Adan Naya, feeling sick, tried explaining that she couldn't prepare a new meal at that moment. Onyedika, infuriated, didn't listen and hit her until she had a miscarriage, unaware that she was pregnant. Bleeding and in pain, Adanaya was left in her pool of blood as Onyedika callously walked away. A caring neighbor witnessed the horrifying scene and rushed to Adanaya's aid. They helped her with treatment and provided medicines to alleviate her pain. Adanaya stayed at her neighbor's place for days while Onyedika showed no concern or remorse. After some time, Adanaya returned home. Attempting to talk to Onyedika about the incident, but he coldly ignored her. The silence and indifference from her once loving husband left Adanaya deeply saddened, wondering how her marriage had turned into such a heart wrenching ordeal. Adanaya continued her daily life, bearing the pain in silence and trying not to attract Onyedika's attention. One day, Ona visited her friend and was shocked to see the bruises on Adanaya's face and body. Consigned on a probe. Adanaya, what happened? How did you get these bruises? Adanaya hesitated but finally lied. I fell down and got injured. Ona, not convinced, asked directly. Did Onyedika do this to you? Adanaya couldn't hold back her tears, confirming Ona's suspicions. Just then, Onyedika appeared and sternly told Ona to leave their home and never return. Ona, surprised and worried, attempted to ask Onyedika, but Adanaya, fearing further consequences, stopped her and pleaded. Ona, please go. I will be fine. Living with a heavy heart, Ona couldn't shake off the worry for her best friend. Once Ona departed, Onyedika unleashed his anger on Adanaya again, demanding that she never bring anyone to their home, not even her mother. He warned her not to leave their house without his consent. Adanaya cried in despair, feeling as though the world had forsaken her. The once loving marriage had transformed into a nightmare leaving Adanaya trapped and isolated. Onyedika had become Adanaya's living nightmare, striking her at every slightly opportunity. Ona, whenever Onyedika was away, would sneak in, pleading with Adana to leave the abusive marriage. Despite the mistreatment, Adanaya refused, hoping for a change in her husband. Months passed and Adanaya found herself pregnant again, still enduring the physical strain of farm work, fetching water, gathering firewood, and handling market duties alone. She bore the burden without any help from Onyedika, who had turned into a merciless master. Believing that the love would eventually prevail, Adanaya clung to the hope that Onyedika would change. However, he only grew worse with each passing day. One fateful day, Ona confronted Onyedika on the road, warning him to stop mistreating her friend. Onyedika remained silent, but when he returned home, he unleashed his fury on his pregnant wife. Furious at this brutal act, Ona decided to seek help. She rushed to visit Adanaya's mother pouring out the details of the ongoing abuse. To her shock, Adanaya's mother defended Onyedika, claiming he was a good man who had been visiting her with gifts, accusing Ona of trying to destroy her daughter's home. Adanaya's mother sternly told her to leave and never return. Heartbroken and angered by the lack of understanding, Ona left, realizing that breaking through to help her friend might be harder than she thought. Months later, Adanaya found herself in labor, but Oyedika showed no concern. Alone and in pain, she cried for help, 
but it seemed far away. Begging Onyedika to take her to the village nurse, he remained silent, carelessly pushing her aside before leaving the house. Unknown to him, Ona had been hiding and rushed to Adanaya's head as soon as he left. She helped her friend to the nurse's place, where Adanaya's body, covered in bruises, struggled against the pain. Crying and weakened, Adanaya pleaded for assistance. With Ona's support, the nurse guided Adanaya through the difficult process. Finally, she delivered a baby girl. Ona felt relief wash over her as she witnessed the arrival of her friend's newborn. In a haste, Ona rushed to inform Adanaya's mother, who arrived promptly. On returning home, Oyedika surprisingly acted kind and welcomed them. Kneeling, he apologized to Adanaya, promising never to hurt her again. Ona, skeptical of his sudden change, sensed that something was amiss, but couldn't quite discern his true intentions. Oyedika seemed to have transformed into a changed man, taking care of his wife and newborn child while Adanaya's mother was around. He willingly tackled household chores and showered Adanaya with gifts. During this time, Anna frequently visited, checking on Adana and receiving assurances that everything was well. Three months passed and Adanaya's mother had to return home. Onyedika, seemingly kind, bought her plenty of gifts and escorted her. However, upon his return that day, he metamorphosed into a beast. He chased Anna away once again, issuing a stern warning to his wife never to let Anna into her home. Confused and concerned, Adanaya tried to find out what happened, only to be met with violence. Onyedika beat her mercilessly for daring to ask questions, leaving the little baby crying in the ground. Indifferent to the turmoil he caused, Onyedika left without a care in the world. Anna lay restless that night. Unable to sleep, disturbed thoughts led her back to her friend's house. As she approached, a crowd gathered in the compound, and her heart sank. Onyedika held the little baby, and shocked gripped Anna as she saw her friend Adanaya lifeless on the ground. Anna, panicked, approached Adanaya, calling her name and touching her, but there was no response. She turned to Onyedika, desperate for an explanation. Onyedika remained silent, frustrated and bewildered. She pushed him away, and the onlookers intervened, taking the baby from him and holding Anna back, begging for understanding. They pleaded with Anna to calm down. Through tears, she accused Onyedika of finally killing Adanaya and demanded he admit it. Onyedika, trying to contain his aggression, insisted that Adanaya had slipped and fallen. Ona, devastated, ran out to inform Adanaya's mother about the tragic incident, urging her to come and take her daughter's lifeless body. The air was heavy with grief and suspicion as the community grappled with the sudden and mysterious death of a beloved friend. Adanaya's mother arrived at the scene and crumbled at the sight of her lifeless daughter, quickly rushed to the nurse for treatment. Anna, burdened with grief, approached her own parents, pleading for help to seek justice for Adanaya. Anna's parents, saddened by the tragedy, resolved to pursue justice for their daughter's friend. Returning to the nurse place, Anna received the devastating news that Adanaya's mother had also succumbed to the shock. Unable to fathom the loss, Ona wept inconsolably. Her parents, felt by a sense of justice, embarked on a journey to the king's palace, recounting the heart-wrenching events. Summoned by the king, Oyedika attempted to spin a web of lies, but truth prevailed as witnesses, led by Ona, stepped forward. The, the kingdom, outraged by Oyedika's deceit, banished him and entrusted Adanaya's child to Ona's care. With the support of her parents, Anna lovingly raised the little baby who blossomed into a beauty reminiscent of her late mother, Adanaya. Together, they forged ahead, finding strength in each other and the hope of a brighter tomorrow.
As the years passed, the scars healed, and the little baby, now a young woman, thrived under Anna's loving care. The community learned from the tragedy, fostering an environment of support and understanding. The story concluded with a powerful message. In the face of domestic violence, there is strength to seeking help, living when possible and building a future free from shadows of abuse.